Guys, I'm starting a series of videos on my favorite notes in a two-part series. Today, 40 to 21 favorite notes. Next Saturday, top 20 favorite notes. And each note, I am giving you suggestions of three different fragrances. So if you want to find out about my favorite notes and learn a little bit about the note and also some suggestions from each note, then please stay tuned. Thanks so much for tuning in. This is Sebastian with Smelling Great Fragrance Reviews. Yes, it's all about my favorite notes. I decided to do this in a two-part uh, video because I'm doing 40 different notes and uh, today it's 40 to 21. These are some of my least loved notes, but they're still great notes. And also, uh, if I mention a note, most likely you'll find a video about each note. So you can go search my channel and discover each note further. Not all, but most will have a separate uh, video about each note. But before I get to the notes, if this is your first time tuning into the channel and you still haven't subscribed, please do click the subscribe button below and also click the bell so that you'll be notified for future videos and giveaways. And I have a bonus note as well that doesn't get a lot of play or mentioned. That's going to be after the outro, outro, so stay tuned to discover that note because it's a favorite note and uh, unfortunately there's not a lot of fragrances that use this note but I love it anyway so we're gonna start off with the first one and I just did a video about this note it's Osmanthus. Osmanthus is a flower that has kind of stone fruit like smells and I'm suggesting three fragrances for this note uh, and you can go catch the video because it just launched last week fig tea from the house of Parfums and Nikolai a great figgy Osmanthus fragrance that kind of takes on a kind of an apricot peachy kind of a smell with figs. It's a great uh, fragrance that has a fruity vibe, you know, with that the whole Osmanthus uh, experience. And Osmanthus has tea-like qualities and also leather-like qualities, but we're focusing on the fruit here. I think my favorite Osmanthus fragrance happens to be from uh, the house of uh, Ormond Jane. Such a great smell. Really, really lovely fragrance, and I do get some uh, compliments with this one as well. I do tend to overspray it, but it smells fantastic. Very, very fruity, and this, th this is definitely nectarines and apricots for me. Uh, it smells like that, but more like white nectarines. Really, really delicious. So that's uh, the uh, fragrance from Ormond Mont Jane called uh, Osmanthus. And then finally, Osmanthus Noble from Exaltatum. Oh my god, full on, in your face, the fruitiest take on Osmanthus with some leathery touches. If you like really deep, rich, um, ambery experiences and fruity fragrances, definitely try Osmanthus Noble. It's really, really delicious. So that's my 40th favorite note. My 39th favorite note is milk. Now for milk I have not done a video on lactonic fragrances or milky fragrances but I do have some uh, favorites. Number one, Remember Me by Javoy. It's like drinking a milky chai latte with lots of spices. It's really really delicious but definitely lactonic and milky. You do experiencing the, uh, experience the milky touches which makes it very very unique for a fragrance, you know, to experience milkiness. Cruz del Sur 2 from Zerzhov. Very very tropical milky uh, caramelly over the top chocolateiness in there as well it's almost like chocolate milk with uh, fruits and things like that really really delicious could be a little overly sweet and of course i've got to mention intense cafe from montal i didn't want to add this to the coffee list there is coffee but it's not in a this particular video. It'll be in next week's video. Uh, this is a lactonic fragrance for me. I get more like a rose latte with light coffee hints, but the fragrance features notes of roses and amber and flowers and um, a few other notes, but it's very, very delicious to, to wear, and it definitely has the lactonic milky qualities, even though there's no mention of uh, milk in the notes. So, Intense Cafe, one of my favorite fragrances from Montal, is a great lactonic milky fragrance. So, milk is number 39. Number 38 is honey. So, honey is a favorite note, and I've got three fragrances here. I think uh, one of my favorite 
favorite honey uh, fragrances has been for a while back to black i absolutely love this one it's not an overwhelming fragrance but it's a nice balance of light tobacco with honey honey smells very very pure and um uh you know natural it doesn't smell fake and synthetic it doesn't get overly heavily cloying but there are some light fruity touches and nutty touches in there as well of course b from uh, zoologist perfumes it's a great great honey fragrance love this one now this one's definitely uh, smells like a acacia honey um, and acacia flowers are mimosa and it has mimosa in it so bees tend to go to this tree uh, and uh, you know do their thing with it so you can totally smell that in this one it's really really a delicious honey treat uh, bee from the house of zoologist perfumes and then finally wajan for a kind of a baklava experience uh, with honey uh, but there's some some rose in here there's some nuttiness in here from tonka beans and things like that so it's a really really delicious gourmand called wajan from uh, the house of parfums of marley so those are my three options for honey at number 38 uh, next, we're going to coconuts. Coconuts at number 37. And probably the one everyone knows about is Virgin Island Water. It's a great coconutty fragrance from Creed. It's kind of like a vacation in a bottle. You can kind of also, uh, you know, layer it with Aventus and kind of have a pina colada uh, effect with it. But a delicious coconutty fragrance from Creed. Uh, very beachy, coconutty, lightly milky, uh, coconut milky. Uh, Coco Extreme from the house of um, Comptoir Sud Pacifique. It's a, the extreme version of a very coconutty gourmand uh, experience. Um, so lots of uh, coconuts here but it's a definitely a, not anything similar to Virgin Island water. It's very gourmandy coconut. So perfect um, coconut fragrance here for the coconut fragrance lover. And then this new one, Vacation by Vacation, is a great coconutty, uh, beachy, suntan lotion, sunscreen kind of a take on coconuts. A really fun, uh, playful, kitschy, campy experience, uh, which I've been speaking about quite a bit on the channel. So Vacation by Vacation is my third uh, option for you for a fragrance featuring coconuts next up at number 36 it's saffron i recently did a saffron video you can go catch that uh top 20 saffron video actually i'm going to suggest suede at saffron from the house of nishane this is kind of like a tuscan leatherish leathery take on but it doesn't really i mean it kind of hints at tuscan leather but it also is very saffron forward so you've got kind of like a saffron heavy Tuscan leather like experience but a great leathery fragrance saffron tends to go very aromatic and leathery so they do use it to create this kind of like leathery cord and it's definitely prominent here in suede at saffron from Nishane uh, this new one I've spoken about Jardin de Misfa from the house of um, Unuit Nomad is a great fruity saffron uh, experience so good, so, so good. Uh, when you're smelling it out of the bottle, it's more fruits and amber, but when you're wearing it, saffron really develops and pops, and I really like that about that one. So that's a great, great uh, fragrance. If you don't know this house, check it out. And then the, the third uh, option is going to be uh, for saffron, Kajal's Jihan. It's a rose saffron combo with some light uh, oud and uh, other uh, patchouli I believe comes in as well. So great trail with this one, great compliments as well and it's a great combination of notes with the saffron being aromatic and leathery and then the rose of course coming in and giving us some sweetness and patchouli giving us some sexiness. So that's a Jihan from the house of uh, Kajal and that is my third uh, option for saffron and saffron is at number 36. So there will be some notes categorized together for example this next one at number 35 it's oranges and mandarin orange I felt like they're kind of close enough to categorize them together because usually they're found together so uh, number 35 it's uh, oranges and uh, also mandarin orange and I'm going with three here from this house uh, not one house three different houses blood oranges from Shea and blue I, I it's you know it's oranges it's not necessarily a different note so I'm categorizing it under this particular note obviously it's an orange a type of orange Orange, blood orange but this one's really really great it has a kind of a more depth dry down but on top it's just a really delicious blood orangey citrus orange sweet sweet citrus orange experience a fantastic fragrance uh, probably the one everyone knows is Atelier Cologne's orange sanguine very much like an orange juice uh, come alive as a perfume
perfume kind of a thing. Very perfect, easy to wear, and also very, very cozy. Smells definitely like lots of oranges with light woody undertones there. And then I was going to recommend uh, Afternoon Swim as a mandarin orange fragrance from Louis Vuitton, but I'm going right now with Mandarin Basilique, uh, very similar. In fact, I have a video on the channel comparing Mandarin Basilique to Afternoon Swim from um, Louis Vuitton, but a great fragrance here focusing on the mandarin orange, but it's contrasted with like um, a aromatic green basil note, which makes uh, for a great uh, wearing experience. These you can find at the disc discounters as well. So it's a really, really great fragrance. Love this one. Uh, it says Mandarin Basilique from uh, Guerlain, and that's my number 35 favorite note. Oranges and also Mandarin oranges. At number 34, I think it, we're kind of in the citrus category because I didn't rank citruses very high because citruses kind of for me are always featured in fragrances for top notes. So I've got other favorite notes, but I love, love, love citruses. One of the citruses is definitely in the, the second video though. But this particular one, we're going with bergamot. So bergamot is a great, great note. I love it. And again, bergamot is used quite a bit as a top note, quite a bit. Anytime you see some kind of a citrus note, it typically will be bergamot. So going with Essential Parfums uh, Bergamot, it's a great light, fresh, sparkly, refreshing uh, take on bergamot. Very easy to wear. Perfection, I think. It's a, a really, really perfect hot weather uh, uh, fragrance, uh, the bergamot here from Essential Parfums. Of course, we can't really uh, forget about Neo. And Neo, I always say, has classic touches. There are some aromatic notes there that, to me, kind of end up smelling a little bit like when I'm wearing it, not out of the bottle. When I wear it, it kind of goes classic masculine, like men's, um, you know, fragrances like uh, Eau Sauvage and things like that, like... Um, uh, YSL had Pour Homme, you know, those kind of fragrances. So it's still a great bergamot fragrance, so uh, definitely one for you to check out. And of course, my favorite bergamot fragrance is Bergamot 22. In fact, it's my favorite Le Labo. It smells fantastic. It smells so, so good. It's almost like orgasmic the, the way it smells. Just a, a, like green, very green uh, citruses all come to life, you know? Perfect fragrance. So Bergamot Le, by Le Labo. I'm sorry, it's Bergamot 22 by Le Labo for my 34th favorite note of Bergamot. 33, grapefruit. Yes, grapefruit has crept up there. I'm really enjoying grapefruit a lot in fragrances. And there are a lot of releases lately uh, for grapefruit, but I'm also putting this category as grapefruit, pomelo, and yuzu. I have a whole video on this topic. In fact, I have a whole video on oranges with lemons and bergamot as well. So you can go search for oranges, bergamot, lemons, grapefruit, all of it. Um, so I've got three fragrances here from uh, uh, different brands for the grapefruit, pomelo, yuzu category. First up is uh, from the Mugler Cologne collection that they launched additional versions of. This is Fly Away. I really love this one. I like its contrast because it's got this really nice, bitter, zingy, uh, spicy uh, grapefruit with like a kind of a green camphoric, um, not mint, but it's cannabis uh, contrasted with it. So it's an easy wear, it's fresh, there's a bitterness, both from the uh, grapefruit and then also from the, uh, the, the cannabis note, and it makes for a great wearing experience. I've turned this on to some friends and he, keeps buying bottles of them. I mean, he wears them liberally because it's kind of like an eau de cologne style, but I think it's a fantastic smell. One of the best from this line. So fly away from Mugler. Nectar from Commodity. Oh my God, it's so good. So, so good. I do have a, a recent comparison video of this uh, done with, comparing to Joe Malone's Orange Blossom. But this features pomelo, and it's really, really a beautiful, juicy pomelo with lots of citrus flowers mixed together. So, so good. The smell is fantastic. This is, again, once again, like the Le Labo Bergamot 22, an orgasmic smell. Such a great smell. And then finally, Pomelo Paradis from um, Atelier Cologne is a great grapefruit pomelo combo. It's very, very calm, uh, calming and cozy. It's kind of similar to the Orange Sanguine. It has this kind of like creaminess, uh, which kind of in fragrances give me this coziness, this calming effect. So I think it makes for a great uh, experience, especially when it's hot outside in the summertime, the heat exists exhaust you and you spray some of this, it's refreshing and calming at the same time. So Pomelo Paradis from uh, Atelier Cologne. So the next note that I'm uh, really into is number 32. Uh, it's pineapple. 
So for pineapple, I've got three fragrances here. And I'm not going to mention the big one. Obviously, you know what uh, the big one is. But I am going to mention this one. Mile High from the house of um, Parlez Moi de Parfum. A great, great pineapple fragrance. It's nicely contrasted with Immortel. And sadly, Immortel did not make my top 40. So I might do a separate video of notes that didn't make this list uh, to discuss them at a later time. But... Uh, the pineapple in here is, is sweet, ripe, but still tart pineapple with lots of immortel that has these kind of like brown sugary caramelized undertones contrasted once again with patchouli and some muskiness and some ambery touches. A great, great pineapple fragrance. So that's Parlema de Parfum Mile High. I love that one. And then we have Lamar from the house of Kajal. And this one's also a great warm syrupy sweet honeyed pineapple but this one's not tart at all this one to me is definitely on the sweet side the pineapple is ripened a lot you know it's a uh it gets sweet when it ripens, it loses its tartness and that's the way I experienced the pineapple in here and it's a really really delicious experience. It's warm and ambery like warm sweet pineapple drizzled with honey is what you get with this one. So that's Lamar from Kajal and then of course Hachivat here. Um, Hachivat is a great experience for pineapple but this is ultra uh, unripened pineapple tart. It's a tart fragrance experience, very woody, green, bitter, uh, with, uh, I think there's a, not pomegranates, what am I saying, grapefruits in here, uh, along with oak moss and some woods. A great, great fragrance uh, for pineapple. So 32 is pineapple, and then this is uh, Nishane's Hachivat. And then at 31, we are going with, what are we going with? At 31, we are going with Tuberose. Tuberose. Uh, is a great uh, floral fragrance experience. Uh, florals didn't make it on this list a lot. Uh, they'll probably be on a you know a separate list outside of the 40, but tuberose did. And I do enjoy tuberose and fragrances. Probably one of the most popular floral styles or floral notes in addition to actual rose, which is in the uh, part two video. But definitely Carnal Flower is a fragrance that's uh, definitely worth mentioning. Uh, it's probably one of the better um, fragrances that features um, tuberose. And this one has coconut and then also kind of like a green camphoric uh, eucalyptus note in it. It smells really, really great. The contrast of those notes are great, you know. Never knew that they would work together, coconuts, uh, eucalyptus, and tuberose. Really does, gives it a green vibe, more of a green uh, tuberose vibe. Twilly de Hermes is also a great one that features um, a tuberose, but this time it's contrasted with sandalwood, a great one here, uh, a popular one from Hermes. And then Hoto from the house of Jeroboam, a very underrated house, uh, sister house of J Javoy. And this one to me, it smells of, of fresh laundry, even though it's tuberose with pineapples and musk. Uh, it's a great clean tuberose wearing experience. So number 31 is tuberose, a great, great note that I think everybody uh, should know about. So that is my first 10 of the top 40. Uh, coming up, we have lots more fragrances. All right, at number 30, it's geranium. Who loves geranium and fragrances? Do you love geranium? I have a whole video on geranium fragrances on the channel. You can go catch that video. But I've got three great suggestions here. Equipage Geranium from Hermes. It's a great fragrance, kind of simplistic, but really great and aromatic. And the geranium kind of uh, is really, really prominent up front there. And also kind of takes you to like a, a fougere like direction a little bit so the entire wearing experience is great it's fresh spicy all that good stuff a little rosy um, there's geranium odorata from diptyque a great fresh take on geranium once again this is rosy as well because geranium tends to go rosy uh, and uh, minty at the same time so this has both minty and rosy qualities but a great fragrance to wear a great underrated fragrance i think everybody should know about and then of course rose and queer this is rose and queer it's rose but they're not using roses they're using geranium to create that rosy accord, accord because uh, in the end rose it, geranium kind of tends to smell uh, rosy and minty it's definitely here but also very green and stemmy and very uh, leathery as well it dries down to a leather a great great note geranium is it kind of like an afterthought note but i think it's a great great note I, everybody should uh, enjoy some of those notes but the next note 
at number 29. It's uh, ISO Super. Uh, this is a great note that's used a lot in bass notes, but you can wear it on its own simplistically, minimalistically, as a fragrance here in Molecule 1 from Eccentric Molecules. A great scent, very popular pe with people that like simplistic fragrances. Also, what we do is Secrets Mono Scent E is Timber Silk, which is a cousin of ISO E Super, another minimalistic, simplistic fragrance that you can wear. I love it. it smells fantastic. And then something with a little more extensive uh, notes, I Am Trash from the house of uh, Etat Libre de Orange, has a pretty significant amount of ISO E Super along with apples and some other notes. A great, great fragrance. Very, very fruity. So that is the ISO E Super category at number 29. At number 28, uh, it is the note of sandalwood. And sandalwood fragrances are here. I've got three of them, of course. We're going to start off with Tam Dao from Diptyque, uh, the EDP version. Probably one of the better and the more popular sandalwood fragrances. It really does smell like really great creamy sandalwood, but also at the same time having those kind of like chopped, uh, you know, shaved woods experience. A great scent, Tam Dao. Um, Piano Santal. Piano Santal from the Orchestra Parfum is a great milky sandalwood, very, very creamy, very, very milky. If you like the milkiness, I could have added this to the milky uh, uh, section of this uh, notes video, but I added it here because it's very sandalwoody, but also very milky. So it's very smooth and creamy, very, very easy to wear, also very cozy. And then finally, Santal du Pacifique from the house of um, Paris Monte Carlo is another great, very, very soft, smooth, and creamy sandalwood. This one doesn't have the wood shavings as much. It does a little bit, but for me, the least amount of wood shavings is Piano Santal. Uh, this one has a little bit, but the one uh, Tam Dao has a nice balance of uh, creamy sandalwood with kind of like a wood shavings uh, sandalwood. So 28 is sandalwood. 27, I've become a big fan of this note. I find it very, very sexy. It's Ambroxan. Ambro Roxin is so cool in fragrances, and I love it as a minimalistic fragrance in Eccentric Molecules Molecule 2. Uh, very, very minimalistic. You can use it to layer fragrances or, you know, wear it on its own. You create your own musk with it when it blends in with your own chemistry. A very, very popular fragrance here. Uh, Macarat Rouge 540, uh, is it, uh, it's, a, it's kind of a you know, confusing thing. People say it smells like ambergris, people say it smells like uh, ambroxan. For me, I think it's a combination of both. I get major ambroxan in here, lots of it. Uh, and I think uh, that's what I like about it. It's very, very sexy and has a very, very sexy trail. So a great, great uh, ambroxan fragrance. Yes, it might have um, ambergris as well, but I'm picking up more ambroxan in here. It's very, very sexy. And then of course, Tigar from the house of Bulgari. Great combination of ambroxan and a uh, grapefruit and some uh, musk thrown in. A very, very, very sexy wear. I could have added this to the grapefruit list, but I kept it for the ambroxan section of the video because it, the ambroxan in here with the grapefruit bitterness and zinginess is a great, great uh, contrast and very, very sexy to wear. So Bulgari Tigar, a great scent. If you don't know it, I highly recommend you try it for a great... Uh, and Broxen fragrance. At number 26, it's cardamom. Who likes cardamom and fragrances? And where are my cardamom fragrances? Here they are. I think the best example of cardamom in a fragrance is uh, this one called Voyage de Hermes in the Parfum version. It smells like authentic cardamom. If you've ever opened up a bottle, you know, a can or a jar of cardamom, smell it. It smells like this fragrance and I love it. It's just nothing but cardamom. There are other notes in there, but to me, it smells like you're wearing cardamom and it's really, really spicy and aromatic and fresh at the same time. A great scent. One of the best from Hermes, I think. If I ranked an Hermes list, that would be in the top five for sure. But another one is Cartier's Declaration. A great cardamom experience, but very spicy and woody. Uh, light cumin caraway touches in there as well. A great masculine offering from Cartier. And then uh, Leighton uh, is a great example of, uh, you know, very aromatic, spicy cardamom with vanillic touches in there and uh, some light fruits and things like that. So those are some great, great cardamom fragrances. Cardamom has become a favorite uh, note of mine. It's creeping up there. It's at 26, obviously. I mean, I have other favorites, but I love it. I think I 
generally like cardamom more for as a supporting player but if you're looking for like full-on cardamom cardamom experiences those three definitely will do for you all right at 25 it's oud why in the world did i put oud at number 25 you know i'm a little bored of oud I'm, I'm, I am definitely a little bored of oud, but there are some great oud fragrances. The Night for its realistic animalic uh, experience with oud. Very, very sexy. It's kind of like a portrait of a lady with lots of oud, minus some of the spices that are in Portrait of a Lady. It's created by the same perfumer, but really, really great uh, fragrance from the house of Frederick Mall. But very, very pricey, but real authentic oud. And of course, Tom Ford's oud wood. It's a great, classy, Oud uh, that can also be listed as the ca you know category of uh, cardamom because it has lots of cardamom, but I think it's a great oudy woody fragrance. Definitely not the realistic oud, but I think it smells fantastic. And then this one here, Gucci's The Voice of the Snake, another great oud. Uh, it smells really really great, uh, leathery kind of patchouli, a little kind of um, uh, what do you call it, cypriol kind of note comes in as well but it's definitely a great, great oud that uh, Alberto Marias has created for Gucci. A little pricey, but uh, smells fantastic. So 25, it's oud. Yes, it's low, but uh, that's the best I could do with oud today because, like I said, I'm a little bored of oud. Uh, a little bored is just way too much, but the next category that I have for you is incense. Incense at 24, and I'm going to go with this one first. Uh, Laboratorio Olfativo's Vanna Gloria. Even though it's vanilla and uh, incense, I'm not featuring this in the vanilla category. I'm featuring it in the incense category for it to be an incense with lots of vanilla. What a great fragrance, though. It's such a great creation uh, created by Dominic Ropian. But, uh, you know, when you smell it, it's this dry, uh, dusty uh, vanilla powdery uh, along with lots of churchy incense. So good. So, so good. Um, Incense Avignon from Comme des Garçons, a great incense fragrance. One of the best incense uh, fragrances ever created by Bertrand du Chaffou. And then finally, Robert Piguet's Casba. Such a great release. If you like incense fragrances, those are definitely surely going to satisfy. Of course, the Vanna Gloria will be very vanillic with lots of incense as well. At number 23, it's Tonka Beans. Why is this one so low? You know, I had a hard time putting these fragrance notes, uh, but you know, it's ranked here, and I'm, I'm happy with the way I'm ranking this um, category, or all these notes. Uh, so we're going to start off first with the, the Dior Feb Delicious. This is uh, probably the best Tonka bean fragrance. And I'm not, I'm not highlighting uh, Tonka Imperial here today, but that is another one that I would highlight as well. But I do want to mention Zerzhov Naxos, even though it has, this can fit into so many different categories, honey, tobacco, lavender, I'm putting it in the Tonka beans category. Uh, it's just a great uh, fragrance with lots of Tonka beans. It's almost like a amber fougere experience uh, because it does have that lavender and it has the tonka beans tonka beans are generally in or coumarin are in fougere fragrances so that's the kind of fragrance this is it's so good it's really really great one of my favorites from zerzhov and this was a complete surprise for me from the house of um, montal arabian's tonka oh my god amazing amazing tonka bean fragrance that smells fantastic it's like the first Arabians, the original, I hated it. I, I mean, I didn't hate it, I didn't really like it. But here, they've done such a great job with it that they, they've taken that original fragrance and turned it into a Tonka bean bomb that smells fantastic. Tonka beans here for Arabians Tonka, and Tonka beans is number 23. At number 22, we've got chocolate. Chocolate was such a challenging note for me before. It's become a favorite note recently, and I've found some great, great chocolate fragrances. First of all, it's acro dark mm, yummy yummy dark chocolate experience so good it's dry and nutty with hazelnuts but lots of dark chocolate here um, Gallagher fragrance is wicked good oh my god I could put this into the Tonka bean category as well it's lots of Tonka beans and lots of chocolate creamy melted beautiful dark milky chocolate all together yum 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 and then finally Soriso from the house of Profumum Roma it's chocolate spray you know it's like you're spraying yourself with like milk chocolate and dark chocolate fused together fusion fusion together it's a yummy it's a really really yummy chocolate delight uh and it wears uh fantastic so that's soriso from the house of profuma roma and my 21 f uh, favorite uh, note sad this got ranked low it should have been higher but i had to put it here because the other notes i like a little more at 21 it's the note of ambrette Who's a fan of Ambrette? 
uh, any fans, it's a great musky note. First off, number 18 from Chanel, a great ambrette fragrance. Oh my God, it smells great. Musky, medicinal, lightly fruity, uh, a little boozy, uh, but like medicine kind of smells come to mind. Peau de Ambrette from Atelier Materi, which is now called Bois de Ambrette. Oh man, such a great musky, sexy Ambrette note. Again, light hints of fruits, light hints of um, booze, but iris and the woods come in along with that Ambrette note. Really sexy to wear. And then finally, Fleur de Peau from Diptyque, another one that has uh, lots of Ambrette with iris this time. It's a great musky, powdery experience. So, so sexy. So that is uh, Diptyque's uh, Peau de Ambrette, and that's the Ambrette category at set number 21. And that's the end of the video today. Stay tuned for part two, the top 20 notes. Uh, let me know what your thoughts are on these notes and these suggestions. What are your favorite notes? If you had to rank 40 of them, how would you rank it? Put a list down so I can find out. Or give me your top five or something, or your top 10. One last thing I wanna say, guys, there's a lot of t-shirts in my, um, Teespring or Spring uh, store. This week I'll have a discount code and it's called Fave Notes and it'll save you 15% off. And I've got notes focused or fragrance perfume style uh, focused t-shirts that I've made that are perfect to wear for the perfume lover. Uh, I'll have a link in the info box and you can use Fave Notes to save 15% off this week for any of my Teespring merchandise. Anyway guys, thanks so much for watching today. If you have any questions or comments, please do list below. Please like this video, please share it, follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, and I'll be back with more videos very soon. Have a good one, goodbye. All right, guys, thanks so much for sticking around for the bonus uh, category or note. Uh, this is a note that doesn't get spoken a lot about, and I don't see it come up in uh, fragrances too much lately. It used to come up uh, quite more frequently in the past. I think maybe it's just gotten bored and tired. People are tired of it. I don't know why, but it's the note of licorice, and I'm categorizing it with licorice, anise, star anise, absinthe. All of these come to mind. I know some, so many friends that love this note in fragrances, uh, but there's not a lot of fragrances out there. But one of the fragrances that really got me into doing fragrance reviews is uh, Guerlain's L'Instant de Guerlain Pour Homme Extreme, but now it's called Guerlain L'Instant de Guerlain Pour Homme. Eau de Parfum version is the one I like. It's really a great combination of patchouli, star anise, with the citruses and also cacao. Yum, yum, yum fragrance, so yummy. So a great example of star anise. Another one for absinthe, I would go with Kinoto Dark from the House of Abaton. It smells like a fantastic licorice drink that smells so yummy, so, so yummy. And then finally, Atelier Oblique has a fragrance called Bohemian Woods. Oh man, it's like licorice or star anise or uh, anise contrasted with these kind of like dark woods, old church woods and you know, like woods that have kind of matured and have been throughout history. Like you walk into an old library, great, great smell. Such a fantastic smell. I love the way it smells because the smell of old woods with this kind of a green, lightly boozy kind of licorice note, so great. So anyway, Atelier Oblique Bohemian Woods, Abaton, and it's a Kinoto Dark and L'Instant de Guerlain Pour Homme Eau de Parfum is a bonus uh, fragrances with my bonus note of licorice, anise or star anise or absinthe. Anyway, I'm glad you stuck around for the bonus note.